Welcome to the Rush to Fail podcast. I'm your host, BJ Gramillion, and this is episode nine or 10. I think I'm right around there. Sorry, I should probably look at that before I start the show. Uh, but anyways, I'm happy that everyone has joined again. Um, if you are new to the show, the Rush to Fail podcast is a podcast all about celebrating our failures and turning them into wins. And so I think um, it's actually been a topic of conversation lately with the name and uh, you know, should we keep it? Should we not? Um, and I would love everyone's feedback, by the way, uh, because there is some explanation needed, right? It's not that we're celebrating failure necessarily, but um, it's more of being okay with the failures in our lives and, and realizing that uh, we can use those as learning experiences. And so that's really how I've lived my life. It's always just been failure after failure and never losing that enthusiasm um, and just shaking it off and, and, and moving forward. So Speaking of that, um, I was, I'm always reading quotes now about, you know, people that overcome failure and, and different quotes about uh, just the Mamba mentality. So, of course, we want to talk about Kobe Bryant, the Mamba himself. And, and so it's funny, um, lately, I found myself coming around to certain athletes that I've always hated because they're so good. So Tom Brady is one great example. Uh, Kobe Bryant is another where I, I think that once they're at the tail end of their career, once they're done, you can really appreciate what they've done because now I don't have to face them anymore. They're always on teams that I hated. And so Kobe Bryant is like the ultimate hated playing against him. You know, you were just so nervous every time that you stepped on the court against your team that uh, he was just going to take over and, and uh, he was just an incredible, incredible athlete. But, um, Speaking of the Mamba mentality, he was asked after one of his games against the Utah Jazz. Uh, I believe it was, um, it was a Derek. Let me think here. No, Darren Williams. Yeah, Darren Williams uh, was a great player for Utah Jazz, you know, a decade ago or so. And there was a game that he had where he shot 0 for 9. So they asked Kobe Bryant, what are your thoughts on his performance? And Kobe Bryant said, I would go 0 for 30 before I ever went 0 for 9. He's like, because if you go 0 for 9, that just means that he lost confidence and he let that mentally overcome him. So he gave up more or less because it was in his head. And so um, funny enough, I didn't even know this, but Kobe Bryant is the leader for missed shots all time. He has had over 14,000 missed shots in his career. And yet, you look back on his career and one of the top 10 players of all time, right? Um, but it's because he was willing to take those shots, you know, in crunch time. And, and uh, obviously, everyone, the knock on him was that he shot too much, but it clearly worked, right? He was, he was probably, he was the greatest example of just the will to win to always overcome. Um, and, and so I just, again, Kobe Bryant hated playing, you know, like my, whenever my teams would play against him, but um, now I just obviously respect him so much. And it's unfortunate what happened uh, with his early passing and the tragic accident that occurred. But, um, but what a cool legacy though, that he's left behind that so many of us look to him as like the ultimate, um, Hey, suck it up get out there first one in last one to leave um mentality so today though um i wanted to jump on a podcast um number one because i committed to myself that i would never miss a week of podcasting so if there was ever a week to miss it would be this week because i have had one of the craziest weeks, you know, ever. And honestly, I feel like I'm a broken record. My wife is, I have no doubt, tired of hearing this from me, but I truly do not have, I feel like, you know, any time to even take a break, go to the bathroom, eat, like there's just, it's just, it, you know, everyone's been there, right? Like we all have had these moments where it's just, life's crazy. So, um, you know, I, I didn't want to lose my streak. That's, that's been going. And so I, I told Will, who produces the show, I said, look, I'm going to jump on and I'm going to do my first one. I'm going to figure out how to do this. Um, I have all the equipment. It's been sitting collecting dust. So he's like, look, this is how you do it. And you can figure it out. So here I am. 
I am doing a podcast and uh, it's kind of fun. Although I don't like looking at my stuff necessarily. It's, it's kind of sucking me out. Um, but that's another one of my fears that I wanted to overcome was, you know, speaking in front of people as well as speaking in front of cameras. And so now I just force myself to do it every single week. And this is no exception. So that's the first reason why I wanted to do this podcast. We actually have recording set for um, tomorrow. Typically, I have them banked where there's three or four banked that we do, you know, back to back to back. Um, but, you know, we had a couple fall through last minute. And so I only got a couple of recordings last time. And so we're short. Um, and so I have more recordings tomorrow uh, with Ryan Zolan and Brad Levitt. So a uh, little teaser for anyone that, that knows them. Um, Super excited to talk to both of those guys. They're they're incredible at what they do. So that was number one. Um, number two, I also wanted to share the reason why I, or one of the reasons why I did the podcast um, was because I wanted to share some stories, life events, what's going on. This is also in, in a sense a journal for my kids. Hopefully, if they ever become interested in learning more about their dad, uh, you know, they, they can have these to look back on and, and listen to. And, and I try and make it applicable to not just business owners like myself in real estate, but also to a broader audience, you know, and, and it's been fun to hear people come up to me and say that they enjoy the podcast, listening to it, which I would have never thought, you know, in a million years, literally anyone would even listen to this first place. I didn't know if I was just recording it for myself just to do it, but apparently there's, there's people out there that, uh, that find it interesting. And so I appreciate all of the support and love that, uh, you know, I've had over the last couple of months and it's just been, uh, a blast. It really has just been, um, better than I even, um, anticipated. So, um, I'm going to share a story. Um, and, and I guess an analogy as well, that'll go along with it. So, um, I served a mission for the church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. And, uh, I served it, you know, two year mission, um, I was called to serve in the Alaska Anchorage mission. And so it covered all Alaska and parts of the Yukon territory or all of the Yukon territory in Canada. So, um, it was an awesome experience. Can't, there's not enough good that I can, you know, uh, express, you know, from, from that collectively that, that happened, you know, in that period of time. Um, but, and, and there's so many different experiences that I have that I think about often, one of them came up recently and it was relating to um the leap of faith okay so when you think of leap of faith i don't know if you're the same as me but i always think of the indiana jones video where um if you recall um he you know there was this treasure map and you know to get to the holy grail they had he had to take a leap of faith it was one of the last steps you know to get into the holy grail so, um, he got to this point and there's this big chasm and, and he's like, Hey, you know, I'm not gonna be able to get there. If I take a step forward, I'm going to fall to my death and die. Cause from what it looked like, um, it was this massive drop off, you know? And so it's terrifying, right? Like we're all scared of heights. I'm sure we can appreciate, you know, what the struggle was like for him. And so, you know, he's looking at it. And then on the other side of that is, you know, his dad and, and his dad's over there. He's going to die if he doesn't save him, right? There's all the drama. And so, you know, he tells his son, you just have to believe. Sorry, there's a little fly going around here. You just have to believe, you know, like you just got to um, take a leap of faith, right? And so he looks at that and he's like, okay, leap of faith, leap of faith. So he, and, you know, very dramatically puts his foot out, pauses, and then steps. And guess what? He lands on solid ground and then he looks around and he's like, oh my gosh, there's actually a bridge, right? To, to, to get to the other side. And so he slowly, you know, takes another step, another step, another step and uh, until he reaches his destination. And so let me tell you guys something. 2023 and really the last 18 months, I would say, I truly feel like I'm living that on a daily basis. And let me explain, you know, a little bit of, of what I mean. Um, we had a business, right? I had a business partner and, uh, or a couple of business partners eventually. And, and, uh, we had built a business and, you know, 
15 years, right? And we've been working on this and never thought that I would ever have to start over. Like, I just was like, okay, this is it, you know? And so, you know, I think it's like that song where you make a plan and you hear God laughing, uh, kind of like that, right? So you, you think that you have life figured out and what it's going to look like, and then it doesn't. And so, you know, I was, I was looking at, um, uh, you know, l- looking ahead, I'm like, okay, you know, I've got things figured out. We've got, you know, 35, 40 employees. Um, we're doing all these different things. We're diversifying. Life's good. Um, it's crazy always, right? But we're making progress and, and I can see that this thing is just growing. It's, it's gaining steam. Um, but of course there's always fractures, right? And, and so there were things that, that were going on that, uh, um, probably looking back on now I can see them, but at the time I just probably didn't pay too much attention to, but you know, fast forward, um, that ended up 2022 really was like, I guess what, like <laughs> all of your plans that you had, forget them because the market is going to just go ahead and shut off completely for the most part in real estate where no one's going to buy, no one's going to sell. It's just going to just, it's going to wreck you. You're going to go from 3% interest rates to 7% in like five or six months. Right. So good luck. You, you're just not, I mean, something like that happens. That is a massive, massive disruptor. That is a, you know, COVID that is a 2008, you know, bank crisis. Like, I mean, you name it, it's, it's no different. It was a, it was a big deal. So market crashed. Clearly we had to make some changes. We had to figure it out. And so it's so interesting though, because again, hindsight's 2020, right? And so you can look back and be like, man, that's pretty wild how it all worked out. But before 2022, we had started buying homes in Tennessee and Georgia, and we had decided to do that really specifically for us so that we could find ways to diversify and put our money in investment properties that made sense. Um, so we were doing it for us. And, and it's so interesting because when you go to start a new business venture, and now I've had experience doing this, you know, a lot. And so uh, I've seen this pattern that, that, you know, happens whenever you do this. And so uh, we, Went out, we decided which market to go to. We narrowed it down to Atlanta and Chattanooga. And then we decided to go with Chattanooga, mainly just because the it's a, it's a tertiary market, it's a secondary market, there, which just means that there's it's, it hasn't popped as much as Atlanta um, had. It hadn't popped as much as Nashville or Phoenix, these bigger cities. Still had room to grow, great area. Um, and then we, when we went out there, just fell in love with the area, loved the people love everything about it. Right. But more specifically the real estate, like that made a ton of sense as far as our business model, which is just, we're looking for long-term rentals to park our money and then depreciate the asset, save money on taxes. There's a lot of reasons why we wanted to invest in real estate. So we started doing that. Anytime you do that, you're going to have bumps along the way. And so speaking of the leap of faith, um, I had some great uh, employees that were willing to, move out there, leave everything behind in Arizona, move out there, see if they could make this work. They, you know, did a great job of getting things off the ground. Can't thank them enough for what they did. And really we were just filling things out though. Like we don't know anyone out there, didn't know a single person. So we had to figure out title companies, lending companies, uh, realtors, you got to figure out contractors. <laughs> you you got to figure out the whole thing. Everything you take for granted after building it for 15 years, you take it for granted. But when you're starting over, that's just what it is. And so the thing is with a contractor, for example, they can have all the greatest reviews. They can have everyone say, hey, these guys are great. But really, you don't know if someone's going to be good or bad until you actually give them the job. And you got, you got to monitor their progress and you just got to see how it goes. Because really, I don't know of any other way. And, and that really is, you're just taking that leap of faith where you're like, okay, let's see how this goes. Well, as you can imagine, some are good, some are bad, some are ugly. And uh, I have so many stories to talk about with, with contractors and horrible experiences that I've had with them. But if you can imagine, you know, it's hard enough working with contractors when you're in the same state. So add complexity with me being out of state, trying to figure out how to manage them. It was kind of a joke and we lost a lot of money and probably 30, 40, 50,000, you know, uh, between 
several properties, but I don't look at that as a loss. I didn't look at that as like, oh, we lost all this money because honestly, we were able to still sell the properties, get the money back. We, we made it work out. Like the money doesn't really concern me. It never has, which might be scary, you know, to a lot of you out there. Like, um, but for whatever reason, like for me, I always just realized, you know what? Money's just money. Like there's, there's more of it out there. Like if something falls apart, I'll just go figure it out and do something else and make money elsewhere. I don't know. Like for whatever reason, I've just always had that mindset and, and that's probably it's good and bad for sure. Um, so I do need someone that's paying attention to the finances and helping out and protecting it because with me, I'm just like, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about everything and I'm optimistic about people, but, um, we lost a lot of money. Like, and we had to go through all these experiences though, um, to finally come to someone in, until you find the right fit after taking that leap of faith, they work out, give them another one, see how it goes and then keep that, you know, continually going. So really more of the lesson for me though, um, has been really in life and in, and in business. Um, it's just about taking that leap of faith. Now let's fast forward to uh, this year, 2023, which I knew was going to be a really cool year. I just had this feeling like it was going to be a massive growth year because I was going to push myself because really I'm having to start from scratch more or less, you know, because after everything happened in 2022, we decided ways. Um, I focused on the real estate investing side and my business partner focused on like the development, uh, construction side of things in Arizona. And so really, you know, it just made sense for us to, to, you know, go different directions with, with, uh, the business. And so, um, so that's what we did, but everything is, is just new to me, right? Like it's a new state. Um, it's a newer business model that I haven't done. I've, I've bought tons of homes. So that part's not any different, but it's just, it's a, you have to learn neighborhoods. You have to learn values and all that kind of stuff. There's, there's quite a bit just to learn. So, um, what I have been amazed at though is, and, and I'm, you know, I'm LDS member church, Jesus Christ, all these things. I'm a Christian. Um, I definitely believe in a higher power without question. Um, I know, you know, just in my core that I, I just believe in that. Right. And I've, just had so many instances over the past couple months that just solidify that I'm not the one in charge. (laughs) I, I know for a fact that there is someone else in the details of our day to day interactions. And, And I can tell you this because every single time that I'm stressed to the max and thinking, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay the bills for next business, right? And and really, it got down every single month. I needed one or two deals to close in order to pay all of my employees and keep the doors open. I, and, and I'm not exaggerating. I think some people might exaggerate when they say things like that. It, it really was touch and go. It was, we had so much money tied up in assets because when the market stopped, that means all that money that we tied up in real estate, we had over a dozen flips and, and, uh, 10, maybe even hundreds of acres. We had construction going on. We, I mean, you name it, we had a ton of money out there and it was just all tied up and, and there's nothing that you can do. Real estate is the greatest investment out there. The Achilles heel is it's not liquid. So you gotta be able to sell it. And, and in our scenario, we could not, I couldn't give it away. Right. And we tried, we tried selling it for just what we're into. I tried to sell it at a loss. Nobody wanted it. It was just, it was too crazy. So we pulled everything off and we had to figure things out, you know, but I had to put full faith and trust, um, in God. And I just had to just believe that things were going to work out. And, and I probably had this naive optimism to everything. And that's just how I've always been. Um, but never more so than now. Um, where, and here's the crazy part is I would have an idea and I would think, okay, I think this will work and this will get me to the next step. Right. And so I would take that step, leap of faith and it worked and a door was opened and that deal closed. And so I was like, okay, I got another month, bought another month, take another step. I know this is going to close. It's going to work. It has to, otherwise we're in big trouble. Boom. 
prayers are answered, worked again, take another step. And I'm telling you, this has happened over and over and over again to the point I just cannot deny that there's more out there. There's someone that is orchestrating things and he's in the details and he is helping bring people into my life that have helped me out, you know, right when I needed it um, and open up doors and helped out with sales, you know, to happen when they needed to happen. But it's never been early. It's always been right on time, right when I needed it. And I don't get to see another step forward. He's only allowing me to see one step ahead and so I'm having to take these steps every single time. And it's terrifying. It, but at the same time now, I almost feel like I've been doing this now so often that it just has become more normal. And I can say that I've definitely um, had a lot more humility without question. That the big reason why I named this Rush to Fail podcast is because that, again, is, is me at my core. Like nothing ever looks as good as it does on Instagram or Facebook when people are like, Oh man, you're doing so great. You're doing all these businesses or whatever. It's like, you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. You really don't, but I'm glad you think that. And I'll let you think that maybe, but you know, it, the, the reality is always different. Right. So anyways, that has been a big lesson for me. And so, uh, this leads up to this week. This is our big announcement. Um, and this is going to get out on Friday. So, We'll see if everything still works out with it, but I'm announcing this on the podcast to everyone out there. We are officially moving to Tennessee. So we've talked about it now for a couple years, year specifically really heavily. We've looked and looked and looked. And once again, uh, the right home came up. Oh, I almost lost my microphone. That's crazy. So yeah, the, the right opportunity came up and we were, uh, we said, okay, I think this is the one we made an offer. It wasn't a perfect home. It's not a perfect home. I don't think we're ever going to find the perfect, F, you know, checks every box, but guys, we haven't even seen the home. I, <laughs> I left two days before we, this home came on the market. So we haven't even seen this home. We're about to spend a whole lot of money for a property we have never seen. So we're going to send some friends to go out there and check it out, you know, and, and, uh, and we'll do some videos and all that kind of stuff, but leap of faith. I don't know of any other scenario that's like a bigger leap of faith, right. Than than that right there. Um, but we're going to be moving to Knoxville. It's an area, uh, called Farragut for those of you that are not familiar with, um, the Knoxville area. It's, it's a suburb of, of Knoxville. So it's about 20 minutes from downtown. We're super excited about it. Um, we want it for our kids. It's great school districts and all that kind of stuff. And, and, but we don't know, right? Like this is once again, I don't know if this is going to work out, like, but I know it will. Um, cause here's the thing. Um, there's a apostle in our church. His name is Jeffrey R. Holland. He gave a talk about this and, and, um, it's always stuck with me where it's, it's, uh, I don't know. It's like, I think it's called the wrong road. Uh, maybe it's not titled that, but just go with it. So it's all about, um, it, you know, he was with his son, they were camping and they came to a fork in the road. And so he said, Hey son, which direction do you think we should go? And they prayed about it because they were like, I don't know. And so he took that opportunity to teach his son. So they prayed about it. His son said, you go right. They go right. They get down there. And then it was very clear, fairly quickly. That was the wrong decision. Um, so they turned around and went the other direction. They went left, you know, at the fork. And of course that ended up being the right direction. So they did that, you know, and you could tell that his son was a little concerned and frustrated. And so he said, Hey, what's going on? Son was like, well, if we prayed about it, why wouldn't Heavenly father tell us the answer? And he said, you know, son, I think that sometimes our father in heaven, he gives up, he lets us go down a certain path that, um, that is the wrong path clearly, but he lets us do that so that we can see for ourselves that, Oh, that's not the right way that I need to be going. In fact, I should be going this other direction. And so then it gives us confidence though. Then we know, Hey, at least we tried it. You know, at least we know that that is not for us and that doesn't make sense. And so then they turned and, and went that direction. It was right. And, and I just, I have seen that play out so many times in my life, you know, where I'm, 
all I know what to do. And this is how I work. Everyone's different. But I think a lot of people are like, my intuition is bad. My wife was telling me this other day, she's like, I just don't have good intuition, right? I wish I was better with that. And I just said, look, I don't know how it works for you. But for me, I start moving. I start going in a certain direction. And I just say, look, I'm going to go down this road. And if it's the right road, uh, please keep me on the right road, right? Like, keep me going. If it's wrong, please tell me, you know, like as I'm going, that I need to turn around and maybe go the other direction. Um, and that's the only way I know how to do it. And so that's how it's been with business. That's how it's been this year, especially. Our business is doing great. We've, we've definitely grown a ton. I've seen so many doors open. I've seen so many new um, relationships and opportunities come about that would have never happened had, you know, all this not happened over the last 18 months to two years. And so I'm super grateful for all the lessons learned right before and after. And, and it's all been for a higher purpose. And, and I love that we're able to go through this life, stumble through it, make failure, you know, have all these failures happen to us, but then just get back up, dust ourselves off and just keep on going. And I love the Mamba mentality of, I would have shot, I would have gone over 30, right? I'm not going over nine. That means that you gave up. That means that you threw in the towel and you're like, oh, this is too hard. I'm giving up. No, screw that go for 30, like start jacking up shots, like until you start making them. And guess what? I'm sure the next, you know, game, I'm sure he did great. And he rebounded from that. But some people let those things affect him for a really long time. And so I'm just um, trying my hardest. I'm not perfect at it. But you know, trying to uh, continue to just take that next step, that next leap of faith. Um, and you know, see where it leads without getting discouraged that at times it's going to be the wrong way and I need to be better about that. So anyways, hopefully that helps you guys. Um, that's just been on my mind really uh, uh, the, the past, I would say, 18 months, but more than ever right now, um, just because it seems like every single month we're making these massive life-altering decisions almost. And, and so we're clearly at this um cocoon phase right where we're busting out that cocoon and, and it's going to be interesting to see what the next phase looks like um hopefully i turn into a beautiful butterfly and not just a fat you know little worm or whatever but uh or caterpillar but we'll see um i'm sure that eventually i'll figure it out might take me a while but um so the last thing that uh that i did want to share is um winston churchill uh he, he said one time that uh, perfection is the enemy of progress. And that obviously goes hand in hand with this. So if you're waiting to do something until you feel like you have it down to perfection, you'll never get it done. You'll just never do it. So if you're waiting for perfection, um, I would just encourage you to, to reanalyze like what, what you're doing. And if, and if maybe you should just take a step into the darkness and see what happens. And I can promise you that I think if you go in motion, if you just take those steps, um, you'll be amazed at what's on the other side. I have seen that in my life, um, really evident over, you know, the last little bit. So we're excited to go. We're, we're going to be moving out there to Knoxville. We're hoping the first week of July. So we want to spend the 4th of July out there. I will say I'm a big pyro dude. So, um, Fireworks are a big deal. If <laughs> last year I had one of my sales reps with me, um, and he was like, "I've never seen BJ so happy and so crazy." Because <laughs> when you go to Tennessee, by the way, they have firework stands that are open year round, which is just—I mean, there's nothing more American than that. So if you're thinking about moving anywhere, I'm just saying Tennessee's got life figured out. So clearly, because of their laws around fireworks, you can buy them at any time. And you can buy whatever you want. So you can get yourself some Roman candles. You can get the, the good stuff, right? So, and, and it's all available 24 seven. I love everything about that. So we're hoping to be there. Um, first week of July, everyone, hey, if, if you live in Arizona or the West Coast or whatever, come on out, see us. We don't have any friends out there yet. Don't know a single person. Uh, actually, I, I lied. I think we know. A couple of people that know some friends of ours, right? So, yeah, we don't know anyone. Um, so, my wife would appreciate if any of you out there want to come visit us. You're always welcome to stay. There's an extra bedroom there. 
our house, believe it or not, was actually on a Magnolia show, Magnolia Network show, Super Dad. Uh, I think it's like season two, episode seven. We watched it the other night. So if anyone has that network, feel free to check it out. But that's our home. Uh, it's got a cool ropes course in the backyard. It's got some cool, it's on an acre. It's got five bedrooms. It has all the things that, all the important stuff that we've been looking for. And really, we're just buying it for our kids. Like our kids, I think, are going to love it. The backyard is awesome. It's what I always wish, you know, that I had. So hopefully they love it. Does not have a pool. So there might be some anarchy in our house because of that. But hey, you can't have everything, I guess. If anyone seriously ever wants to come out to Knoxville, reach out to us. Um, we would love to love to have you. You have now listened to the Rush to Fail podcast episode something. I don't know. Maybe we're around nine or something. Uh, but we're going to keep on going and it's going to, it's going to be fun and I'm enjoying it. So I'll stop talking now. Thanks everyone. Bye.